when one party does not perform what they are supposed to perform as part of their contract that we call it as breach but if there is a breach of contract what is the option what is the solution available to the other party that is what we are going to understand with the remedies for breach of contract but first we need to understand what do we mean by breach of contract so there is a latin matter uh, maxim which says ubi just ibi remedium which means where there is a right there is a remedy so if somebody is getting a right with respect to contract for something then the somebody is also getting a remedy out of it so a contract being a fountain head of correlative set uh, correlative set of rights and obligations for the parties would be of no value if there is no remedy to enforce them there under so wherever there goes a right there goes a responsibility that is how we take it and if there is a right there is a responsibility and if you're not accepting if you're not performing if you're not standing up to that responsibility it will also lead to some kind of breach and when there is a breach it would also give a remedy to the other person that is what we are going to understand so if there is a contract if two parties are bound by something if the promisor is bound to do something by the promise which he has made so what if he is not performing can he just walk out like that yes people would walk out if there is no remedy to the other person so that is why it becomes important that the other person should have some solution some right against this breach also right so now there are two parties to the breach the party who commits the breach is called the guilty party and the party to whom the breach has been committed or the, the other party the party who has been injured is called as injured party or the aggrieved party so like if i'm not performing my part of contract i would become the guilty party and you would become the aggrieved party or as you are getting the injury out of this non performance from my side that would make you an injured party right now in case of breach the aggrieved party would have one or more of the following rights but not all of the rights so you can have one or more than one depending upon what kind of situation it is and these are the rights we call them suit for rescission suit for damages suit for quantum merit suit for specific performance and suit for injunction these are the different provisions these are the different rights that you are getting these are the different remedies that you are getting as an aggrieved party or as an injured party so let's check them out one by one the first one is suit for rescission what does it mean rescission means cancellation by breach of the contract the contract is discharged automatically but sometimes the party may have to approach the court formally for the rescission in order to be discharged from his own obligation so what happens if there is a contract which has been broken but since the contract has been breached you have moved out of your part you are not performing your part but now the contract was in such a condition that i have to perform my part so since you are out i also get out of this contract but in order to get out of this contract i need this contract to be cancelled so since you have broken since you are already out maybe i cannot go to you i can approach the court and ask for cancellation of this contract so if there is a cancellation like sometimes it happens that i am supposed to perform something and the other party dies so what happens the other party cannot cancel it formally so i need to approach the court to get it cancelled that is what we mean, mean by suit for rescission suit for cancellation i can always file a suit in the court so that i should get this contract cancelled otherwise maybe i will be stuck somewhere and i may have to perform which i am already out of because of this breach so formal this is just a formality i can always file a suit just to get my contract cancelled that is called suit for rescission next it is suit for damages now what do we mean by damage damage means the financial loss that the other party has in uh, uh, incurred so the term financial sorry the term damages means the financial compensation collectible by the defaulting party to the affected party for the la loss suffered by him once the contract was broken therefore the aggrieved party could bring associate action for damages against the party who are guilty of the breach of contract the party is guilty of the breach and is vulnerable to pay damages to the aggrieved party so that is what we mean by damages that whatever loss the uh, other party the aggrieved party has occurred the defaulting party should pay for it and to get that pay to get that loss covered we file a suit called suit for damages now there are different types of uh, damages so we need to consider which kind of damage you are asking to get paid for so one is very basic called nominal or Gen, uh, no, not nominal it is, should be normal normal or general damage because nominal damages mean something different so this is something called as general damage or normal damage damages that arise within the normal course of events from the breach of contract are referred to as normal damage so whatever normally loss you are occurring that would be 
normal damage it is nothing related nothing special nothing extraordinary if i'm supposed to give you something and i did not give you that is your loss right like i promised to buy your car for rupees 1 lakh you have de delivered your car but i haven't paid for that so whatever price i haven't paid that is your loss so you can always go and get those damages cleared by filing a suit for normal damage damages or general damages because that is the loss you have suffered right that is your normal damages then there is something called as special damage special damages are those damages that are collectible for the loss arising on account of some special or uncommon circumstances that is they undo the na uh, uh, natural and probable consequence of the breach of the contract so that is something like other than normal like uh, i gave you this example that i promised to buy your car for rupees 1 lakh you have delivered the car i haven't paid the price but since you are expecting a price you have already made a booking let's suppose you are expecting 1 lakh rupees from my side and now you want to buy a new car for the new car you have paid 1 lakh as an advance right now 2 lakh was the amount 1 lakh you have got uh, you have already paid and 1 lakh you were supposed to get from me by which you would supposed to pay that but since i haven't paid you now you cannot pay for uh, that 1 lakh that you were supposed to pay so you have to cancel and now if you cancel you have to incur some cancellation charges for your order which you have already made now this cancellation charge is another extra loss another extra damage that you can collect as special damages right so that is something other than that but because of the contract if you are incurring some extra loss on some special circumstances and common circumstances that will be considered as special damage right next it is exemplary or vindictive damage what is this these damages are awarded against the party who has committed a breach of contract with the thing of grueling the fallible as a defaulting party to the co to compensate the aggrieved party generally these damages are awarded just in case of action on loss now again this is something special this is something exemplary or this is something vindictive we can say awarded uh, who has committed a breach of contract with the thing of grueling the fallible as defaulting party now what happens sometimes if it is deliberately it is made to you know the so that the other party should incur the loss in that case the damages that we can claim is called vindictive damage like it's like you know if i want to take some revenge out of you and i'm not paying you deliberately because of that i know you are going to incur this loss and you have incurred the loss so that is an exemplary damage that also you can be claimed next it is nominal damages nominal damages are in, in latent quantity they are just for the name sake nominal means just for the name sake so these are the damages that court orders so that you know the court's decency is maintained or just for the name sake just for the formality court wants to put a damage put uh, you know uh, collect the damage so that is also an option where nominal damages are collected next it is liquidated damages now what do we mean by liquidated damages when parties to the contract fix the damages at the time of formation of the contract itself is called liquidated damages so if we decide in the beginning itself that if there is a loss this is the amount that you have to pay or this is the amount that both of us have to pay to each other if there is a breach of contract that is something called as liquidated damages right these are the damages now then something called as specific performance suit for specific performance we can say where damage is not sufficient the court may order for a specific performance of the contract like this is again other than damages court can also add order for a specific performance and there is uh, like there is one example a united to sell associate previous stamps of the pre independence amount to b for rupees 500 however afterwards a refused to sell it during the case b may file a suit against a for the pre a uh, precise performance of the contract and therefore the court could order a to sell the stamp to b as united so that is very specific like specifically you have to do it there is no other option so that is also an option that can be uh, considered now some of the cases where the court could direct the execution area unit as follow now what happens sometimes court can uh, direct something once the act is done compensation in cash for its non performance couldn't afford adequate relief yes that is uh, what we understand once there exists no normal for crucial the particular damages caused thanks to the non performance of the contract now what happens no normal or crucial the particular damages caused what happens because of non performance you cannot compensate anything it, they, these two statements are trying to say that whatever we are doing whatever damages you are paying it will not you know remedy it will not uh, solve it will not fix what has happened just, it is just an attempt so that the other party should get something out of it but you cannot fully rem uh, remedy or you cannot fully recover what has happened because of the non performance right however execution shall not be granted within the following cases wherever the damages are associate adequate relief yes if damages are actually sufficient then something is there wherever the contract is calculable 
that can be calculated so you cannot say that you know damage won't solve anything where the contract involves personal nature if there is if something involves of personal nature and the person dies what can you do in those cases you cannot do anything wherever the court cannot supervise the effecting of the contract that is also a scenario where the contract isn't truthful and simple some somehow somehow it is simple that your co contract is very complex that is another scenario where execution shall not be granted here the court direct the execution area that is also there that execution can be asked because non performance would not solve anything so performance becomes necessary that is what we are trying to say it becomes a little bit complex over here this statement right now there is something called as suit upon quantum merit quantum merit means proportionate so in a literal sense the expression quantum merit means that as much very little uh, as much very like attained in an ex in an exceedingly legal sense it means the payment in proportion to the work done the part uh, the principal provides for the payment of compensation under certain circumstances to someone who has offered the product or service to the opposite party under a contract this couldn't be performed under certain circumstances now what happens is quantum merit means the contract was in the process something has already been performed and now you have breached the contract the contract has been breached and because of that breach now i can ask to get my payment for the proportion of the work that i have already completed that is what is called as suit for quantum merit i should get paid for what i have already done in proportion to my work done it is you who has breached the contract not me right so that is there cases for claim on quantum merit wherever the work that has been done and accepted under contract is afterwards discovered to be void yes if uh, like later on it disc uh, originally i was doing it but later on it is discovered to be void in that case i can ask here the party has affected a part of the contract will truly the quantity uh, will truly the quantity for the work ha he has done and therefore the party that accepts and reaps the profit under contract should create compens uh, compensation to the opposite party simple wherever one party abandons or refuses to perform the entire contract here the compensation for the work done could also be recovered supporting quantum merit like the other party refuses to perform then and uh, refuses the entire contract so whatever they have performed they can always recover wherever one th uh, wherever one thing is finished with non intention to try and do gratuitously in such cases the opposite person is certain to create the payment if he accepts such services or merchandise or enjoys their profit so wherever one thing is finished within non intention to try and do gratuitously so it is simple that whatever has been done is was not uh, it, it 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 was like a non gratuitously means it was not free so at that time also quantum merit can be employed the next one it is wherever the contract is cleavable and therefore the party has enjoyed the advantages of the work done in such cases the halfway in default could sue on quantum merit if the opposite party has enjoyed the advantages of the part their part performance so it's like the all these scenarios are where the work has already been done and now the work is not progressing the performance has been done halfly so half payment can also uh, can always be made that is what we are trying to say by quantum merit now there is something called as injunction now what does it mean suit for injunction means instructing not to perform so the term injunction could also be outlined as an associate order of the court instructing someone to refrain from doing a little act that has been subject matter of the contract so i can get a permission that you should not be doing this wherever a celebration uh, yeah wherever a celebration has secured to not to do one thing and he will it and thereby commits a breach of contract the aggrieved party could ask for the protection of the court beneath sh uh, sure circumstances and procure associate injunction now this will become easy when you look at this example a narrowed to sing solely at b's theater and uh, obsequiously else for an exact amount afterwards a created a contract with c to sing at c's theater and refused to sing at b's theater the court refused to order a selected performance as a result of the contract wa was private however granted an associate injunction against a to refrain uh, from uh, refrain him from singing any place else so that is a scenario that there can be an order that you cannot sing at any other place right this is what we mean by remedies for breach of contract